After making a video on the Seattle Mariners and their rebuild and top prospects, I got a lot of requests to cover the Marlins in the same vein. Here are their win-loss records for 2014 to 17, or the years in which Giancarlo Stanton, Christian Yelich, and Marcelo Zuna were the starting outfielders. Despite having some promising pieces to build around, the Marlins weren't able to have a winning season, and on top of that, had one of the worst minor league farm systems, had very low attendance, and were among the least valuable MLB franchises. So when new ownership took over after the 2017 season in the form of Bruce Sherman and Derek Jeter, they blew up the roster to cut costs and hopefully rebuild into a winning team. So let's see how it's going. My name is Bobby, and welcome back to Stat Stories. This video is suggested by a ton of people, including Danny M, Eli Frick, Carlos Salazar, Redditor James, Triple Digits 27, Raw Kid Fool, Jacob Carrion, Jake Popieco, Alejandra Arabal, and anyone else I may have missed. Thank you. Let's start with how the farm system was looking a few years ago. If you're familiar with baseball scouting grades, you know that players are scored on a scale of 20 to 80 or 2 to 8. This scale may seem odd, but it makes sense when you throw in this, a normal curve. If you've taken any sort of stats class, you've seen one of these and know that most observations in the data set are within one standard deviation of the mean, and that almost all observations are within three standard deviations. If we fill this curve out with our scouting grades, this scale makes sense. 50 is an average player, and each standard deviation above or below that is 10 points on the scale. That's why you never really see minor leaguers receive grades at either end. Those grades are super rare. But I bring this up because the Marlins didn't have many good prospects in 2015 or 2016. In fact, they had just three receive a score of at least 50 overall on MLB.com. A 50 means that a player is projected to be an average MLB player. And for context, most franchises have around eight or nine minor leaguers with this score. And those players you see in the top 100 lists will generally be 55 rated or above. Heading into 2020, the Marlins now have 12 players with at least a 50 grade, boasting a very deep farm system that is one of the top five in baseball. This transformation really began with the Marlins fire sale after the 2017 season. The first player to go was Dee Gordon, who was sent to the Mariners for three prospects, pitchers Nick Knighter and Robert Duggar, and middle infielder Christopher Torres. Next was the trade of reigning MVP Giancarlo Stanton to the Yankees, where the Marlins received Jose Devers, George Guzman, and Starlin Castro in return in a move that was largely a salary dump. Marcelo Zuna was traded to the Cardinals a few days later, bringing back some more familiar names in Sandy Alcantara, Zach Gallen, Magnair Sierra, and Daniel Castano. And then came the Christian Yelich trade, which also brought back four players in Lewis Brinson, Monte Harrison, Isan Diaz, and Jordan Yamamoto. I know that was a lot of players, but why stop there when we can bring up the Marlins' 2019 trades? The best catcher in baseball, JT Real Muto, was traded prior to the start of the season for current Marlins' top prospect Sixto Sanchez, starting catcher Jorge Alfaro, and Will Stewart. In late July, Sergio Romo and minor leaguer Chris Valamont were dealt to the Twins for Luis Diaz, and a few days later, Nick Anderson and Trevor Richards were traded for Jesus Sanchez and Ryan Stanek, and then Zach Gallen was flipped for Jazz Chisholm. Clearly, a lot of Miami's young talent was acquired via trade, but we also should mention their draft picks, namely Braxton Garrett, Trevor Richards, Connor Scott, JJ Blade, and Cameron Meisner. The Marlins' draft strategy seemed to be drafting high school players in the first few rounds before switching to college players by round four. And this was true until 2019, when they went with college hitters with the first two picks with Blade marking the first time the Marlins went with a college player in the first round since 2013. I also want to mention two notable international signings in Cuban brothers Victor Victor Mesa and Victor Mesa Jr. The two received quite a bit of publicity in the baseball world after they signed with the Marlins in 2018, with the older Mesa seen as a top 100 prospect in baseball. His first season in 2019 was a disappointment, however, as he really struggled with the bat between Class A Advanced and Double A though he does have the speed and defensive skills to play center field at a high level. His younger brother actually surpassed him in the Marlins' prospect rankings, as Mesa Jr. hit pretty well as a 17-year-old in rookie ball, and he still has a lot of time to grow and rise through the ranks. Now, in my Mariners video, I went through 10 players who seemed most likely to be a part of their core in the majors. The Marlins didn't have the same clear-cut group. 
They have so many options in the outfield and on the mound that it's tough to guess who ends up getting the most playing time a few years down the line. So what I'm going to do here is just look at their top 5 prospects for 2020, since as of right now, they are the 5 players with the most hype surrounding them. We'll start with shortstop Jazz Chisholm, currently the Marlins' number 3 prospect. Chisholm has above average power, speed, and defensive skills, but has an aggressive hitting approach that could lead to low hit totals. 21 homers at AA last season is really good, especially for a shortstop, but he also struck out 32% of the time. His walk rate was very good at 11.4%, so clearly there are things to like here. Chisholm is often compared to a young Javi Baez, and if he can cut down on strikeouts like Baez did, then he can become a star just the same. Next are the outfielders JJ Blade and Jesus Sanchez, the Marlins' number two and four overall prospects, respectively. Blade led NCAA Division I with 27 homers in 2019 as he helped Vanderbilt win the College World Series. He spent his first minor league season at Class A Advanced and had a decent time at the plate in just 38 games. While he's not very fast, his strong arm lends itself nicely to playing right field for the Marlins in the near future. Jesus Sanchez is a left-handed hitter like Blade and may have more raw power in his bat, though his high ground ball percentage has prevented him from hitting a large number of homers. He's average to above average in every tool, though his strikeout rate has increased as he's progressed through the minors. And lastly, we have Edward Cabrera and Sixto Sanchez, the number five and number one prospects in the organization. Cabrera had a big 2019 season that saw stock rise, allowing a 2.23 ERA and a whip just under one between Class A Advanced and AA. He also struck out more than a batter per inning across his 19 starts, so the 6'4 right-hander looks set to make his Major League debut in the near future. Sanchez is one of the best prospects in all of baseball and looks to become Miami's ace in the rotation. He throws a hard four-seam fastball and a two-seamer, and has a great changeup and slider to go with them. And while his 2.53 ERA at AA in 2019 was impressive, I find his high strikeout rate and low walk rate to be the best indicator of his ability. Miami, you have a special talent here. The current delay to the baseball season has thrown some of the timing off for this rebuild, but keep this in mind. All 10 of the Marlins' top 10 prospects will be at double AA or triple A whenever baseball resumes. That's a lot of guys vying for big league playing time, and again, I'm not sure who will stick around long term. But you gotta think at least a handful of these players will pan out and help the Marlins push for a third World Series title. Out of Here Baseball recently passed 9,000 subscribers, so thank you for the support, and if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button to help continue that growth. Leave a like and share the video if you enjoyed it, and leave your video suggestions in the comments. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.